Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroddenFeather.com and in this fly tying tutorial I'm going to show you the basics behind tying the Spanish fly called the Paradigon. Stay tuned. Let me give you a quick overview of the fly we're about to tie. For this Paradigon nymph, we have it tied on a haunted hook with a hazard fly fishing bead. We have a nice speckled Coque de Leon tail that leads up to a very slender body. We have a hot spot in front of that body, and then we have a black wing case that we formed with nail polish. So this is a finished look of the fly. Now let's get a clean haunted hook in this Stonfo transformer vise and start tying. All right, let's start tying this Paradigon Nymph. In my Stonfo Transformer vise, I have a Honic H450BL competition hook, and the size is 14. I really love this hook for so many of the different nymph patterns that I fish, especially in those tight line situations. Uh, this is what we call a jig hook. Um, it works really well. It has that down eye, and you can see that really wide gap. You'll also see this fly tied a lot on the H230BLs. This is more of a, a traditional nymph hook with that down eye. There's some really neat YouTube videos out there where tires will actually kind of convert this into a jig style hook by using a slotted bead and inverting it. So I recommend you checking that out on YouTube. Speaking of the bead, this is a three millimeter slotted bead. You can see the slot at the top. It's a faceted or a disco style bead, and I'm really pleased to announce that this is a hazard fly fishing bead. I now plan on uh, featuring the hazard fly fishing beads on my fly tying videos. Uh, I definitely encourage you to check out their website, which is hazardff.com, and you'll also find that listed in the description of this video. Now shoved into that hazard fly fishing bead is a little bit of .010 wire. I have around eight to 10 turns in there. Once I had them on, I really pushed that up to kind of hold my bead in place. Next, we're gonna add some eight aught uni thread. The color is all of done, just one of my really favorite colors to use on so many patterns. I'm gonna lock that in directly behind that lead wire, then just wrap over the wire a little bit to cover it. Then as I go down, I wanna kind of go down and back up a few times to build up a nice little ramp to that lead wire. We can get rid of the tag end and work our way back. And next we're gonna be adding in our tailing. For the tailing, we're gonna be using some Coque de Leon fibers. The color is a medium pardo. You can see this feather has some really nice modeling to it. I'm gonna select approximately, say four to six fibers. I'm not gonna count those, I'm just gonna try to line them up by their tips. And I want their tips to basically go a length of about the body. So whenever I line them up, I want them to go to a little bit inside the bend up until about the middle of the bead, somewhere around there. Now, if you look inside my fly box, you'll notice that I tend to leave these tails a little bit longer than normal. Uh, I believe that's a little bit more representational of the Betis nymph, which is, this is a, a fly that's attempting to imitate that. So you'll notice that style on mine so I'll try to tie this one a little bit more to the standards. So I make just a few wraps and I kind of see how they're lining up compared to everything. In this case, they're just a little bit long, so I'm just gonna pull them forward a bit. Once I have them to that desired length, I'm then gonna wrap back, kind of hold them so they're propping just a little bit up. I'm gonna stop about where the barb would be. And you wanna see those tails going straight back. If you believe that you have them, in that correct location, just pull down a little bit on your thread and grab the scissors and let's trim away the butt ends. Now I'm going to talk a little bit more about the body in the, um, in the next segment of this video. But in this case right now for the body material, I'm going to be using this Hens body material. It's called Body Quills. And the number is BQ10. It's kind of an, an olive brown color. I really like this color. Now, if you're gonna be using 
uh, a dark color, I would recommend you sticking with a darker base thread. There are many situations where you can actually get away with a hot spot style of thread for the base, but in this case, I'm gonna stick with that darker thread to kind of blend in underneath this body material. There are so many other body materials you can use. We're talking about crystal flash, basically any type of synthetic material that has a little bit of a, a flash or sheen to it. That's what I like in this case. What's also neat about these hens body materials is that you can just put a little bobbin on this as well, and I see many tires that will actually use it that way. In my case, I just like to cut off a nice size chunk of this. Then I wrap it around my thread. Once I have it around there, it's basically doubled up right now. And that's what I want. So I'm just going to lock it in. I'm going to wind my thread forward. When I get up to where that lead wire is, I'm just going to go back one more time, about three quarters of the way. And really do a decent job to kind of build a little bit of a taper. I don't want a lot of a taper. I just want just a little bit of a taper, that really skinny carrot. Think of it in that sense. Now with my body material, I'm just going to wind it forward. There'll be a little bit of overlap, but you really don't want much. When you get up to the, um, up to the bead, we're just going to make a few wraps, nothing too crazy, because we're going to be locking this stuff in with a few other materials. So make a few, and then I'm immediately going into my whip finish. Only three turns. I don't need to crowd the head at this point. So right now, if you take a peek at what we have going on, it's looking pretty nice. We have a nice little tail shooting straight out from the body, a very slender body. Next, we're gonna add a hot spot. Now, whenever I think about the hot spots, this is gonna be a hot spot collar, so it's gonna get shoved directly behind the bead. I really love to find colors that will contrast with the body. Now, in this case, because I have that olive brown, I really like to go with kind of an orange. This is a fluorescent orange. It's from the company Glow Bright. It's a really bright orange. It really lights up well. But the one thing you'll notice about this is it's kind of a thicker material. So you have to be careful that this doesn't really build up quickly. So the way that I like to tie it in is just to start directly behind that bead and just go back about three or four wraps, no more than that. Then I take my tag end, I'm going to hold it forward and start wrapping back forward because when I cut it, I want to make that cut so this is basically popping into the slot, just like that. Once it's in there, I'll trim it. Now at this point, I really don't want to make too many more wraps. In fact, I find myself kind of looking around, making sure that all that under thread is, is kind of covered up so there's not a lot of dark spots popping out. And I just make a few more wraps and immediately go into a whip finish. I'm building up the bead. Only three or four turns is what I need. Make sure it's tight. and then trim it close. Now, if you take a peek at what we have here, this is a really pretty looking fly. It's looking great. But now we're gonna add kind of that, that Spanish flair to it, which is kind of what makes up this Paradigon Nymph. We have a couple more materials, and the next one is a really neat one. We're gonna be adding a wing case, but instead of using actual materials, we're gonna be using black nail polish. Um, my wife helped me pick out this one. The color wasn't black, the color was darkness. I'm pretty sure that that's the same as black. I think they're the same things. She verified this was black. And all I'm simply gonna do is, I, I shook it a little bit before using it. And I wanna put a wing case right on the top. So I'm just gonna get all that excess out of there. There will be a lot. I don't wanna get too much of this, this on there. I really just wanna put a nice dab. So I'm just gonna kinda hold everything in place and dab it so it's just going around the slot and covering the wing case. And I also want it to cover up, or not the wing case, I'm sorry. I want it to just cover that hot spot. So if you take a look at it, we have a pretty nice wing case going on right now. There will be a little bit of a recession depending on how wide of a slot that is. 
Because I'm using a, a larger hook right now, this is a size 14, this Hazard B definitely has a decent slot in it in this three millimeter size. If you're gonna be using a larger bead than this, it's gonna be even more of a significant gap in there. So kind of keep that in mind. Uh, 14 is really the largest I'll tie the style fly. Now to compensate, we can keep putting more of this within that gap, but we have to be careful that it doesn't build up anywhere else. So I'm just gonna give it about 30 more seconds, let that kind of initial one dry. And put just a little bit more right into that slot of the bead. Now at this point, I'm gonna, I would take this out of my vise and hang it up to dry because I want that thoroughly uh, dried before I go on to the next step. I put another fly in and I, I do that with about six to, to 12, depending on how many paradigons I'm going, I, I would be tying at that time and let them all dry. Once they'd all dried, I'm then gonna move on to the next step. Because we don't necessarily have or, or need that time, I'm actually gonna stop the recording right now and I'll return to it with the next step. Now we're down to the last couple steps. We are gonna be coating the entire fly in a UV resin. This is a UV clear fly finish. It's thin, this is by Loon. And I'm simply gonna take the entire top of it off. I'm gonna grab a bodkin. I really prefer to use bodkins that have a longer needle. I might simply dip it in, and you're gonna get a nice little healthy blob on your bodkin. Whenever I apply it, I'm only gonna to try to apply around three to four. I'm just, and by three to four, I'm just gonna mean going back. Ooh, I don't wanna do that. Kind of rush that one there. But I'm simply gonna apply from the front going back. And I wanna cover this up, the, the, basically that entire body. Now, if you feel like you have too much on the upper end of this bodkin, there's no UV there. You can always just take that, and I kinda like to work in the opposite direction, and I'll, I'll really steal it back from my fly. Once I feel like I have an adequate amount of that UV resin, I prefer to start with my fly upside down just to kind of help that UV build on the bottom. And I'm gonna hit it with a UV torch. With this torch, it dries really fast. It cures in around eight to 12 seconds. I tend to hit it for, for a longer period of time. I'm not sure why, I just kind of believe I have to really ensure that it's cured and it's, it's dry completely. And then we have a couple options here. Some tires prefer to put on a second coat of UV, though I'm really not into that. I don't need it to build up that quick. Instead, I really, I'm really i more concerned about the fogginess that you'll sometimes see existing within these UV finishes. So the easiest way for me to prevent that is just to grab a little bit of hard as nails and place one coat of this over it, kind of like a protective coat if you think of it. So I'm just gonna wait, let a little bit of that run off. I'm just gonna try to put just a little bit on. I don't wanna to put too much. So again, around four swipes. And then I always have a paper towel and I just kind of wait and I'll move it around, kind of let it thin out a bit. Then I'll just touch it and I'll always get a little bit of it off. I don't want to get a bunch, but I just want enough off. And at that point we have our finished Paradigon Nymph. This is really just a sleek looking fly. It kind of builds off of the head back to that really slender body and our nice Coque de Leon tail. We have uh, really a lot of great things going on with this fly. And let me change the camera angle a little bit and we will talk a lot more about this Spanish nymph. Now that we're finished tying the Paradigon nymph, let's talk about it both from a fly tying and a fly fishing perspective. For that fly tying piece, let's really just concentrate on some of the major keys of this fly. I mean, whenever I look at it and I think about the Paradigon, I think of a very slender fly that's heavily weighted, that's kind of covered in a UV resin and typically has a hot spot. So you really want to focus on that slender piece and heavy because you want it cutting through the water and getting to the bottom in a hurry because that's really where you want it to be during those tight line nymphing situations.
Now the great thing about this pattern, however, is that it allows for a lot of creativity to be built into it. Whenever I think about that body material, you can go with the type that I used in the video. You can do a quick Google search for that original. There's a lot of them out there. If you search for Spanish fly paradigm nymph and click images on Google, you're going to see a lot more patterns than you could really even imagine. A lot of them will look kind of like the buzzer patterns that I see from overseas. But what's really interesting is that there is really just an absolute plethora of color combinations out there. Now, whenever I think about this pattern, I really tend to go with either one of two routes. I want to make it very natural looking or I want to make it really just kind of an exaggerated color combination, something that the fish are going to say, why not? And for some reason, that latter combination really seems to work well. Now, I first learned about this fly whenever I was hearing about Devin Olson fishing this in a competitive fly fishing situation. And if you do a Google search and if you look on YouTube, you will see Devin tying it. And he does a really great job of explaining a lot of the intricacies to the fly, talking about maybe the, the wing case and why you want it black and, and why it does or it doesn't matter that it's on the top, especially if you're fishing some type of a jig nymph. He'll also talk a lot about the different color combinations that he's used and he's had success with. But by all means, play around with it and see what works for you. Basically, I'm looking for some type of a material that has a little bit of flash built into it that will just pop when it's underneath that UV resin. So uh, by all means, see what you come up with. And if you have any really interesting ideas, I'd love to hear about them down below in the comments section. Now, whenever I think about fly fishing with this fly, this is one that I think is absolutely perfect to use in a tight line nymphing situation. Now, can you also hang it below a dry fly as a dry dropper? By all means, go for it. But this is one that I tend to use by itself or with a second fly, and I fish this in those tight line situations where you make a quick cast in almost pocket water because this gets down in a hurry. So you don't have to wait, wait for this fly to get down to that intended depth. Instead, you can make a cast and know that it's going to be down there in about a second and it's right in front of the trout. So those are the situations that I like to fish it, especially a little bit faster water, just because I know that's where nymphs that are going to look like this might be. Now this originally, I believe, was intended to fish more like a bluing olive. So think about those types of situations in which you've had success with their nymph patterns in the past and try this in its place. Now, the one interesting part about this is that whenever you hear Devin Olson speak about it, he's tied it to match the bluing olive, yet that hasn't been his most effective color combination. In fact, I believe he uses a color that's very similar to a blue, and that has worked really awesome for him. And it's worked really well for me too. But again, experiment and see what color combos work in your local waterways, because you might be surprised by some of the results. Now, the other piece of this that I really like to bring in is the fact that this came out of competition fly fishing. Now, I'm not a competition fly fisherman, but I definitely can see that they bring a lot to our sport. If we think about some of the newer hooks that are out there, we're using Honic hooks right now in these videos, we really kind of owe thanks to the competition world for bringing these hooks to our attention because I think all of us agree that we can appreciate a good hook. And those hooks are great ones. And they came out of that competition world. Now I know not everybody's into that competition fly fishing, but this is one of those flies that came out of it. In fact, I believe Team USA really found out about it because I believe the Spanish team was fishing with these flies and doing really well with them. So I guess a special thanks goes out to Team Spain and Team USA because you brought them to the attention of all of us and they work really well when it comes to catching trout. Well, as always, thank you everyone for watching this YouTube fly tying video. If you'd like to watch more like this, you can check out my YouTube channel or my website, which is troutandfeather.com. If you're looking for more videos like this one, specifically for nymphs, whenever you go to my website, click fly tying videos, and then there's a category on nymphs. If you click nymphs, it breaks it down into mayflies, stoneflies, and you'll even see a section on jig nymphs. So this is more where you're going to find the videos like this one. If you have any questions or comments, as always, you can email me at tkamisa at gmail.com. Or as I mentioned earlier, I'd love to hear from you down below in the comments section, either how you like to fish this fly or fly similar to this or any types of creativity that you've added that you say, geez, I think you can try this and the fish will respond. Once again, thank you everyone for watching this video and I'll see all of you next time.